Hey guys, John coming to you from Evolve Custom Rod Shops showing you how to make a carbon fiber split grip. Instead of doing something for a fly rod, we're doing something a little different, something for a casting rod. The other advantage of doing the split grip is the bottom half of the rod could be used as a fighting butt for a fly grip. So it's got a couple different uses. And we're using a store-bought foam blank. We're not using something that I made. So give everybody the opportunity in case they don't want to make their own foam blanks. Taping the arbor on a quarter inch mandrel because this the foam is a little bit larger today we're going to be matching this to the brand new american tackle hcc reel seat this thing is simply stunning it's a bait casting reel seat it's not made for a foregrip i got it with the unilock hood this thing is all hand laid carbon fiber you can see on the inside here that it's nothing but carbon fiber. This thing is absolutely gorgeous in person. And the amount of work that went into this for as much as they cost, it's a bargain. I didn't have any G2 grips in my shop, so I decided to make my own carbon fiber grip, complete with a carbon fiber arbor to accentuate this beautiful carbon fiber reel seat. The first thing I'm doing is measuring out where I want my arbor to be, where I want my rear grip to be, and where I want my fighting butt or rear grip to be. Um, the first thing I need to do is see where I'm at here, um, roughly at about 16 millimeters. Okay, that's pretty standard for most of these reel seats. What I'm going to be doing first is taking the bulk of the material off with this 60 grit sanding sanding stuff uh, this is what i use to make my custom reamers if you click on the link right up here it'll take you to how i make custom reamers but this is the same um, reamer material what i'm doing with this stuff is just taking the bulk off in case you don't have a lathe at home you can use you know sandpaper uh, once i get it close to where i want it to be i'm using a sanding kit that I got from Penn State Industries and basically what this is is a assortment of different grits I use it for wood turning grips I use it for turning pens um, because with wood it's a little bit different um, and now I'm just trying to get it down to the right diameter okay since I'm at 16 millimeters on the inside of the real seat I'm probably gonna want to be around 15 to 14 and a half. I want some play in there, okay? Because I'm going to be putting epoxy and I'm going to be putting carbon fiber on top of that. Basically, now what I'm doing is trying to get everything uniform so it's the same size all the way down. And once I have that, I will then work on the outer side of the real seat that's going to sit against the grip. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking this down. Taking it down to where it needs to be. And this will allow an even more positive, a more positive feel with the rod blank. Now keep in mind, because this is going to be under the real seat, I need to be about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half under what I measured. So now I'm shaping the rear grip, and all while I'm doing this, I'm test fitting everything to make sure it's good. Now there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the rear grip and the real seat, but once I put it on the rod, you'll see that it'll fill right in with some epoxy and it'll be flush so now what I'm doing is I'm putting a final coat on everything I'm using some high, uh, much finer sandpaper just to put almost like a polish on it this will allow the less air bubbles get in the epoxy I'm cutting the rear grip I'm using just my coping saw where I want to split the grips up I'll pull everything apart. 
pull off what I'm not using, test fit everything, make sure it looks good, feels good, and then reapply everything on the mandrel. Now, because everything was one piece, I'm going to have to add a little bit more of an arbor here. That way, um, my seat doesn't move around. Perfect. Getting everything adjusted. I'm also making some adjustments on the rear grip. I'm sanding a little. Just making sure I'm 100% happy with it. Laying out my zip ties for what's going to be the uh, tie up once I put the carbon fiber over top of the epoxy. Now what I'm doing is checking my outside diameter. My outside diameter on these grips is just over an inch. So because of that, I'm going to be using one inch carbon fiber and that will expand a little bit more and also cinch down a little bit tighter. What I'm doing here is just making everything look a little bit prettier, squaring up the ends. Now I've measured out my carbon fiber. I know how much I need. I'm cleaning up the area because in case I set something down accidentally, I don't want to pick up all these fibers. I'm using five cc's of each hardener and resin. Um, I'll of course mix it for about five minutes. This is where you want to get your gloves on. You also want to straighten out all your carbon fiber. Make sure all the carbon fiber is going in the same direction. Sometimes if you bunch it together and pull it back out, you'll get it nice and straight. And make sure everything's make sure everything's where it needs to be. Now I'm taking the epoxy and basically I'm getting it on here nice and wet. Um, I want to I want plenty of epoxy on this. I'm probably putting at least two cc's, maybe even three cc's down on this foam because I want to make sure that that once this carbon fiber sits on top of this foam that it cinches down and starts to saturate. That'll help hold it in place and keep its form. I'm slowing down the video here because I had a whoops moment. As you see here, I'm taking everything out and boom, there goes my epoxy cup filled with about two and a half cc's of epoxy right on the ground. Somehow, nothing happened. It landed straight up. I got a little on my shorts and I'm good to go. So now I stand it straight up. I take my blank with my carbon fiber on it and I slide it down. Now make sure you don't slide it down too far because you're going to have to chuck this back up. So, as you can see, the carbon fiber I put on here is too long. It's longer than the mandrel, so that's not a big deal. You'll watch how I handle that. But what I'm doing now is I'm basically cinching it down right at the, where the uh, fighting butt is or the rear grip is because that is where the carbon fiber starts. And then what I'm doing is, because this works like a Chinese finger lock, you pull down on it and it cinches up, I'm working my way to the end of the mandrel, more towards the arbor. Now, because I overcut this, now I'm not so worried about what direction it is and stuff like that. I just need to cut off the excess carbon. So I grab my scissors and literally just cut it off the edge. That way my mandrel's exposed and I can start putting my zip ties down. Chuck everything up. I'm not speeding this part of the video up because this is probably the most tedious part. Um, and it, you know, just... It's not really that hard. It's just a matter of taking your time and not worrying about it too much. So the first thing I want to do is cinch down the back end, the you know where I'm going to put my butt cap on, and I tighten up that zip tie. That's going to keep a nice square edge with that rear grip. And then I'm going to come down where I cut it, cut the blank against the mandrel, and I'm going to try and keep that as square as possible. 
Okay, I'm also, while I'm doing this, I'm moving the carbon fiber down and tightening it as I go. This is really important because you can get, it can bunch up on you and it'll, it'll leave ripples and you don't want that. So take your time, you know, the epoxy, this is pro coat medium build. Um, it's got plenty of working time with it. So just take your time, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Now, because of the diameter where I'm cinching this down by the quarter inch, you might get a rippler tool. Don't worry about that. That has to do with the fact that the carbon fiber will only cinch down about half its size. So if it's one inch, it's supposed to only go down to a half an inch, but it can go a little bit more. You just have to stretch it. Now I'm putting a zip tie right at the base of the arbor. Okay, where the real seat meets the grip. And this is really important because the arbor, the arbor I want as skinny as possible. And because I'm pushing the envelope with the half inch of what this bus, the uh, carbon fiber is supposed to shrink down to, I really need to make sure it's nice and tight. cinch it down and you see I worked in a pattern there from one end to the other that way I continuously tightened it up now what I'm going to do is you can use razor blades side cutters whatever you want but basically you're going to cut the tag ends off the zip ties I'm using a razor blade at first and then I go to my scissors just be careful not to hit the carbon fiber at this point because it's very fragile and you can you can mess up the weave once that epoxy's hardened it's nearly impossible to mess it up so you can see here i'm using the scissors don't worry if it's a little long now what i'm doing is i'm going back with my epoxy and making sure this carbon fiber is saturated that is so important because once the carbon fiber is saturated it's going to be hard and it's going to become one with that foam, and that's really important. That's how you get your sensitivity. Um, that's how you get your strength. Just making sure I got a nice thick coat on it. Some of the parts under the zip ties you won't be able to get to, but don't be afraid to, to do the zip ties. Um, as you can see here, I'm adding zip ties. That's not a bad thing. Basically, I didn't like the way it looked. I wanted to square up the edge a little. So I just pull it down the mandrel a little and then put another zip tie in, add some more epoxy. You cannot really add too much epoxy at this point. If you add too much, you might get bubbles, but you can sand those bubbles right out. Once you get to your about third or fourth grip that you've actually made, you'll get a feel for where you need stuff to be, and you'll find out that it's a lot easier than what you make it out to be. So as you can see here, I'm adding another zip tie. I want I want the square, I want a really nice square edge on that arbor. I also don't want any raised section where the arbor is because I gotta put a real seat over this when it's all said and done. Cinch everything up nice and tight, cut the tag ends off, and then add some more epoxy. This whole process only takes about 10 to 20 minutes at most, but it looks like a lot because you're doing a lot of stuff at once. Once you're done using the epoxy, just add a little bit of heat and that'll hopefully get any bubbles out smooth out the epoxy and again you know this is just something something you need to do with epoxy in general just to kind of even it out so that makes it for part one of this video i hope you like it um wait for part two we're going to be sanding and finishing it making it 
good to go so it sits on the blank just the way you want it. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, wait for part two. You'll love to see that. That'll be a nice finishing up. It's completely different than the other video. So for all of you who haven't watched my other video, you'll really like it.